previously on Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies. You better say guilty, bitch! Okay, Mr. Falcon, just, just take it easy. No! Say guilty! Oh my god, this Falcon's got a gun too? Why are all these fucking birds have guns? I have no interest in this chit chat. Hold him with the cross examination. Mr. Wright, it's not your fault! Why are you darling? Bird's gonna kill me! And now, back to listening to people! Hello! Sneako B, back with some more Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies. We last left off, we completed the DLC case, and it was fucking awesome! I can't believe how good it was! Especially with how goofy, the goofy premise it started with. I was like, oh man, this is gonna be so dumb. But damn, it was really good. A lot of you guys said that, uh, it was honestly like a much better version of Big Top. It was kind of like a circus and that it was a performing show and the death of their owner, essentially. Much better version of that. And I think, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. It was... It was Great, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I think they did a great job with just the how things were uncovered and the progression of things and how they sort of turned everything on its head with what you expected to have happen. I love it when they subvert your expectations a bit. I'm always happy to be surprised because a lot of times I feel like you can see what's going to happen like a mile away in these uh, Phoenix Wright games. And I, I liked that uh, Marlon ended up being not necessarily a bad guy in the end. And it, he actually, you know, ended up getting rehabilitated and... Uh, going back to work again. And honestly, I don't, I don't think I can think of another case where that's happened, where like, they didn't get thrown in jail and we never see him again, or, or fucking kill, sent down death row. Dude, I wanna, I wanna see that, all right? I wanna see that in Ace Attorney game, just see one of the guys we get thrown in jail just get fucking executed. <laughs> the judge is the one with the guilty, and he's like, fuck your shit, bitch! Yeah! You see Matt on guard like, no way, dude! If I... But anyway, I think it was a good time that to, to do that case. Like, I, I feel like it didn't really interrupt the flow, because we still hadn't really got into the 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 main story uh at least not yet but i imagine that this is probably when we're gonna start doing that so we're on to now the main back to the main so we're back to the uh, main cases again and on to uh case three turnabout academy all right well let's get started i feel like i'll probably be controlling right again because i was apollo last chapter Themis Legal Academy, a prestigious high school with alumni in the highest echelons of the legal world. Ha! <laughs> 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 oh, until Monokuma came. Oh, seriously, what the? Until the killing game began! Oh! <laughs> Ser seriously, the dog on Orpa was strong with that intro cinematic. October 24th, 1.25 p.m., Themis Legal Academy. Oh no, I'm gonna be late! Oh, we're flashing back? <laughs> Puff! Ooh, finally! So this is it, the illustrious Themis Legal, er, the, Themis, Themis Legal Academy. It's the place where many distinguished lawyers and prosecutors got their start. When news spread that Mr. Wright had gotten his attorney's badge back, he received a call from his school asking him to pay a visit. Oh, okay. Yeah, can you believe it? I, I actually got a legal education, I know. Mr. Wright brought us along, hoping we'd learn something from the experience. But no, I had to go and blow it by getting here 30 minutes late. God damn it! Hang it up. It's not all, all business today. After all, today's our school festival. I like it wherever we go, just like people die. <laughs> they drop like flies around us. October 24th, 129 PM, the Legal Academy, first floor. Wow, this, this place has school festival written all over it, literally. Mock trial, school festival, cup. Kate Curry? No. Something Curry. I don't know what that says. Ooh, looks like they're having a live rock concert. Ooh, maybe, maybe they'll have Clavier come in and sing them a ballad. Why all the cold stairs? I suppose everyone's in school uniform except me? Well, I like the way I dress. <laughs> I know where Mr. Wright and Apollo are. Your attention, please. This is an announcement from the Mock Trial Committee. The Mock Trial will begin shortly. Oh goody, will we have a mock version of me? 
The mock judge. And the mock comedian. All students and faculty, please proceed at once to the lecture hall. Thank you. Bye. Sounds like a mock trial is about to start. But where's this lecture hall? Looks like all the students and faculty are heading that way. Might as well join them. Maybe I'll find Mr. Wright and Apollo there. Ooh, well, that's fancy looking. There we go. I feel like we've never seen anything sort of futuristic in these games at all. Well, that's that's a little more like it. October 24th, 1.33 p.m., Themis Legal Academy, uh, third floor, Lexter Hall. This must be the lecture hall. Wow, they spent some serious money on this place. Yeah, seriously. Is there just a statue hanging out in the middle, too? This court can't even compete. Uh, hey, Athena, over here. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's us. Ah, uh, Mr. Wright, Apollo. I've been looking for you, for you too. I'm so sorry I'm late. Ha ah, ah, ha! It's all right. We we didn't really care. It's okay. Sorry we couldn't wait for you, but we didn't want to be late for our meeting. Lucky for you, the person we're supposed to meet also seems to be running late. Apollo, you're what happened to your mouth? It seems to be back to normal. Yeah, I, I think we were all getting kind of tired of that. Uh, Mr. Wright, Mr. Justice, it seems Professor Court has yet to arrive. Oh, Jesus, what the hell? Oh my god, is that statue talking to us? How unprofessional of her to keep vis visitors to our esteemed inst institution waiting like this. I shall make her right. I, I will not. Oh, what do we have here? All right, you haven't been introduced yet. Ah, yes, you must be the young lady Mr. Wright was telling me about. I am Aristotle Means, a professor at this hallowed hall of learning. I oversee the lawyer course here. It is a pleasure to meet you. I'm Athena Sykes. I just really recently got my uh, attorney's badge myself. It's nice to meet you too. How wonderful. So vigorous and vivacious. You just earned yourself a gold star. Hmm. Uh, oh. Ah! Wow, thanks! That big smile of his is kind of scary though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You've like dentures in there or something? Like, that has a lot of gum. Looks like the mock trial's about to begin. What are we, what are we gonna do about our meeting? Oh, speaking of the mock trial, do either of you know what, what it's about? Oh, but I thought we had a, sent a pamphlet to your office. Right, the pamphlet. Whatever happened to that? You won't be seeing it again. Trucy used it for the old rip it up and restore it trick. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't work as advertised. <laughs> God damn it, Tursi! Well, it seems I better explain the situation then. Thank you, Professor. Talk to me. Now, does anyone have any questions? I do, Professor. Could you tell me all about your school? What an excellent question. Here's a gold star for asking. No, don't do it again. No. Oh, good, no smile. Our academy has three courses to choose from. Students seeking to be lawyers take the lawyer course. Likewise, li likewise, budding prosecutors take the prosecutor course. And future judges the judge course. <laughs> oh my god. I walk into the judge course, everybody has a big, thick beard. Hello, my brethren. Oh my god. It is I, the most prestigious of alum. Oh my god, I miss these beautiful beards. If only the fucking public could be just as beautiful as all of us. I have everything here for someone who wants to seriously pursue a career in law. Yes, well, that makes what our school is special, and today even more so. Okay, I, I do believe that, uh, I mean, and I, I could be totally wrong about this, but I, I was under the understanding that being a judge was like, you don't usually go, like, right into being a judge. Like, you gotta, like, really work your way up there. For, like, I think a lot of them were lawyers themselves at some point, or practice law or it did something else. Like, I don't think you can just go to like, I'm gonna learn how to be a judge class and then just become a judge. I don't know, I, I, am I wrong about that? Like, I, I was pretty sure that's, I don't think that's how it works, but that's how it works in Japan and Fordia and that's all that matters. After all, we are to be treated to, to a lecture by the legendary attorney, Phoenix Wright. Uh, oh, hey, cool. I am? Uh, I mean, of course I am. Can't wait to hear all about his return to the legal profession. Yeah, I had a really awesome DLC case. I mean, what did I tell you all about it, old man? You're giving a lecture, Mr. Wright, but you're not even a professor. Ah, oh, I should be, though. 
Yeah, well, I'm just giving them what they want. Which is more of this sexy right action, baby. What about me, Mr. Right? Yeah, right. You fucking wish Apollo. Come back to me when you got your name on the title of the game. Then we'll talk. Uh, I did, remember? In the previous game? Nobody counts that one, Apollo. Shut up. Did you even know you were meant to be giving a lecture here today? Yeah, sort of. I don't know. But I, can't, but I came early because I was supposed to have a meeting. With the head of the judge course. Constance Court. <laughs> ah! Something kind of creepy about that face. I don't know what it is. It's been a whirlwind of a morning. Let's leave it at that. Ah, oh, come on, we're all having fun here. Professor Court, she's a wonderful instructor, but quite unpunctual. Oh, so that's who's late. Oh. From what I've heard, our esteemed Mr. Wright here is scheduled to hold a training seminar tomorrow, in addition to today's lecture. A training seminar? For lawyers? What exactly does that involve? Oh my god, what the- <laughs> Wow! And we thought Apollo's mouth problems were bad. What the fuck is that? That is some other beast entirely. Why it involves the very skills that make a lawyer a lawyer. The arm angle when shouting objection, the proper way to strike the podium. How to project one's voice, and most importantly, how to bluff your way to victory. Ah, uh, um, who exactly do you, do you want, do you want me to teach stuff like that to again? Pull shit out your ass, like Phoenix Wright does. What a wonderful question. You just earned yourself a gold star. The great honor of taking a seminar by a famous lawyer and a famous prosecutor. That is what is at stake at this mock trial. The crown jewel of the school festival. God, seriously, stop smiling, man. Your face is fucking terrifying. Get rid of it. Ah! Ah, la, 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 la. The mock trial in question is a prestigious event that every student aspires to win. The top student in the lawyer course and the top student in the prosecutor course. Face off in a simulated court case set in this very school. As for the case itself, we select the best script written by a judge, course student, and base our case on that. Oh, all right, cool. Oh, a one-on-one -on -one battle, how thrilling. So if the student's starting to be a lawyer wins, they get to take my, take my training seminar. But one of the other student wins. I'm not a prosecutor, so they go to Edgeworth. There's no cause for alarm. We have a famous prosecutor ready for just such a case. Oh my god, please fucking be Edgeworth, baby! But exactly who it is, well, that is a special surprise. A famous prosecutor? No, I can't be. Uh, Professor Me Means, forgive me for interrupting you and your guests. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's just, okay. <laughs> Go away, you're not Edgeworth! I don't care about you! Uh, Oh! Oh! Hey! It's, it's Judy! <laughs> I was like, I recognize that name. Oh! It's Flower Girl! And it, you're, oh, you're gonna, you're trying not to be a judge, really? I'm Juniper Woods, a third year in the judge course. Professor, the trial will begin shortly, since you'll be delivering the pre-trial speech. Would you mind waiting up in the balcony until we're ready for you? My, how very organized you are, Juniper. You just earned yourself a gold star, too. Could you stop saying that? Because you're not actually giving us any stars. But what about Professor Court? Well, I suppose she'll eventually arrive. Now then, I trust you will look after our visitors, Juniper. Yeah, we know each other. Yes, of course, Professor Means. Juniper? Juniper Woods? Is that you? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> Athena! I almost didn't recognize you! I didn't know you were back from Europe! Wait, I, I'm trying to remember, how's this timeline working again? Uh, what are you talking about? That was... Didn't we just come off that last case? I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm kind of confused on the, where in the timeline we are. The first case was supposed to be after the second case, and the third case was is still... The, I mean, the DLC case was still before the first case, I think. So I thought this was just take place right after we had, like, had her trial. I guess maybe we did some other stuff before then? I, I don't know. Oh. We do know each other? That's a coincidence. We've known each other since we were kids. We're like best friends, right, Judy? Y yes Well, we live close to each other, so we used to play in the forest together. 
Yeah, like a, a lot. Won't you look at me? What's going on? I guess I shouldn't be surprised since we haven't seen each other in a long time. We haven't? Wait, are we still before the first? Oh, no, we're I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. We are. We're still before the first case because Apollo's here and he's not dressed in his coat. Okay. All right. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I had a bit of a brain fart. Okay. So we're still before that. So we still haven't seen what caused Apollo to go off the deep end. So this is also what led to us meeting up later. And, and then he became uh, Polly's and Thena's best, bestest little buddy. Hello. Right now, she doesn't seem too warm to us. Anyway, uh, we're supposed to go wait in the waiting room, right? Not that I wouldn't mind taking a look at the mock trial you're putting on today. Unfortunately, the mock trial is only for students and faculty. There is one seat reserved for Mr. Wright, but no other exceptions are allowed. Ooh, it's a lot colder here. Yes, I'm very sorry, but it is part of the student curriculum after all. Maybe because this guy's in the room? Hope you won't, fight, won't mind remaining in the waiting room until the trial concludes. <sighs> Oh, that's too bad. So I'm gonna learn something new today. Of course, ah, uh, get the short end of the stick, just like I always fucking do. I'll tell you what, Apollo, why don't you take my place? Wh what Really? Yeah, sure, I don't want to be here anyway. Sure, besides, I'd like to meet with Professor Court as soon as she gets here. Uh, no fair, I want to see the mock trial too. I'm sorry, I'm gonna let Apollo pull what little Rick he has. <laughs> he doesn't have much right, let's be honest. As a guy with Professor Means. But of course, Mr. Wright, if that is what you wish. It's so then. We'll fit a full and detailed re report, Apollo, so pay attention. Just being the new kid sure stinks. If you would please follow me, I'll escort you down to the waiting room on the first floor. She seems a lot less terrified than she was uh, when we meet her. Or well, we saw her in the first case. October 24, 2.15 p.m. Themis Legal Academy, first floor waiting room. Still about Professor Court. It's been over 30 minutes. Mr. Wright's snoozing away on the sofa. Uh. This is so fucking boring. I should have hidden in the lecture hall and spot on the mock trial. Crash. Ah! What was that? This sound is someone fucking dying. October 24th, Theme Civil Academy, first floor hallway. Uh, uh, blah. Elena, I could have sworn I just heard something fall down and break. If you go running now, they'll think it was you. Well, it wasn't me. They came from somewhere outside. Oh, well, I better go have a look. It's probably somebody dying around us like they always do. Thing is, everyone else is in the lecture hall. Okay. Sixty seventh school festival. October twenty fourth. Okay, outdoor stage. Is this stage stage for some sort of concert? Kinda reminds me of a courtroom. Wait, Athena, behind the window stand. What? Oh dead! Ah fuck! Oh, you just got shot with a fucking crossbow! Brother Court, can you hear me? Professor! Wait, that's that's who we're supposed to be meeting with? Oh, damn! You got rocked, girl! Looks like our meeting- meeting's been cancelled for us. <laughs> Put on my sunglasses! Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Wright! This is no time for dead memes, Mr. Wright! No way, this can't- this can't be real! I called the police. They should be here soon. I'll go tell everyone in the lecture hall, too. No, wait! We'll find out soon enough once the police get here. Let's do our own crime scene investigation before it gets too crowded around here. Huh? Are we even allowed to do that? Of course we are! Because I'm Phoenix Wright and I'm the Lord of Law. It's no big deal as long as we leave it exactly like we found, found it. Plus, no, nah, never mind. Anyway, we should look around while the scene's still fresh. Let's go ahead and just contaminate the shit out of it. But, okay, you're the boss! Do you have any gloves? Of course not! Got a little rotate here. You okay, lady? Wake up! Wake up, wake up! I guess I really do have to examine the body. Well, I guess I better get used to this stuff like this if I want to be a full-fledged lawyer. Okay, well, we got a little book there. What do we have here? A book. I'm guessing it fell out of her chest pocket. Wait, what if it's her diary? 
but it's the most private thing a girl has. She's dead, I think, and I don't think she cares anymore. True, but considering the situation at hand, my apologies to the late Professor Cord. No, don't! Hmm. Looks more like a planner than a diary. Every page seems to have sent this the same sword mark printed on it at that. I still think a girl deserves her privacy, but this may help us solve the case. Okay. Ugh, there's an arrow stuck in her side. Gunshot wounds and stab wounds are pretty common, but arrow wounds? Yeah, the killer went medieval on this chick. It's a homicide anyway, you slice it. In other words, we have a murder on our hands. A murder? Here? So, that big Sarah with the murder weapon. Well, that in the boat that shot it. Right. But where could the killer have shot her, shot her from? The stage is a sea of obstructions. Actually, I just realized I'm, I'm, I'm playing as Athena, and I'm, I'm staying as playing as Athena, it seems to be. Okay. I don't know extra or not archery, but it can't be easy to hit a target with this much stuff around. Would it be possible to kill someone by stabbing them with an arrow? Not sure. So we better do some more investigating before jumping to conclusions. You notice anything strange about the body? Take a deep breath and have, take a good look. Um, well, now you mention it, there's no blood around it. There's also, there are marks on her wrist, too. Here the victim's body is cold and rigor mortis has already started to dissipate. It would appear that quite some time has passed since Professor Court was murdered. The thing is, the, the quad was packed with students up until the start of the mock trial. Wait, then does that mean that she was killed at a different location? Oh, I know! The killer moved the body here while everyone was in the lecture hall! That's a definite possibility. No saying else. Um, her arms are raised over her head, and there are dark bruises around her wrists. Yeah, the professor was actually tied up with something. Uh, look at me, ac actually acting like a like a real mentor here. Like, like what else do you see? No, seriously, I'm generally asking, I don't know. But so your wrists were unbound, and as she reached up to stretch, she was killed? Actually, I'm not so sure about the, this theory. <laughs> um, well, there's not exactly a lot to go on. I think that's all we're going to find out from the body for now. Nice work, Athena. Your face only turned five shades of pale. I was expecting 50. <laughs> we should probably take a picture of the crime scene, just in case. Okay, I'm on it. Say cheese! Uh. That's a good one. Jeez, I thought I was the one with a twisted sense of humor. I think that should do it. Alright, let's take a better look around the area while we wait for the police to arrive. This pile of rubble sticks out like a sore thumb. It's like a, pot a broken pottery or plaster. Maybe this is the source of the noise that we heard earlier. Mm. There were supposed there were supposedly two statues on this stage. I didn't recall hearing that a co-ed from the Fine Art Club had made them. There were two. Then that thing over there is the remains of the other another statue. Got a red one and a blue one, just like Ed, just like Edgeworth and uh, Phoenix. I'm more maroon than red. This could be. Related to the case. Let's take a closer look. Something buried in the rubble. The feet, the Themis Herald? Wait, we shouldn't disturb it. Let's just read what we can. Pending declaration of love, Rock's campus. You know, wh I'm wondering, was, I can't remember, was, was Juniper one of the, one of the students that we saw at the, at the beginning intro, at Cinematic? I think she might have been. Actually, that that might be all three of them right there. I know I know the the, the glasses guy was there. Uh, Final act and toward love triangle centered on campus. She devil Juniper Woods, level-headed lawyer, of course genius, and hot-blooded prosecutor, of course student. We'll go head to head in a mock trial battle for the the she devil's black heart. Hugh O'Connor has declared that he will confess to her if she win if he wins. It's kind of it's kind of strange, like <laughs> like. We didn't really get any inkling that Juniper was really into law at all, you know, or had any idea about it in the first case. So it's kind of weird to see that, like, oh, she was training to become a judge? Wait, what? I seriously wish I hadn't read that. Got more shocking discovering a murder victim's body. But, but, but we're talking about my friend Judy here. She never leave guys on like that. I think now you don't believe everything you read, do you? Come on. Sorry, it was clearly written with malicious intent. I'm not buying a word of it. You're right. It's still disturbing. Even this third-rate tabloid material. 
I gotta get the deets, man! Okay. Oh. Wonder what this, this was a statue of. Whatever it was, it was a reddish purple in color. Is it Edgeworth? I'm actually starting to think it, it might be. When Paul and I first got here, most statues are already here, but they were covered. I bet they were waiting to unveil them when the school festival moved here to this stage. Oh, it totally fucking is, and the blue one's for Phoenix. I mean, the stuffle back-looking back thing was actually being used to cover the statues. I guess that just leaves the question, were they broken by accident or on purpose? Hmm, what a puzzle this is. Uh, Mr. Right, Athena. Oh, here, co oh, here comes Apollo! I have dare see you with Musa fast! Ah, no, 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 ah, 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 ah. Listen, something sp big's happened. I was at the mock trial when the police announced a body had been found on campus. Yeah, yeah, we know, it's right there. What? That's right, and we're the ones who phoned it, phoned it in. We found Professor Court dead behind the window stand over there. <laughs> Hi! Can you show me? Oh shit, that is a dead person. What the fuck? I've already had a quick look at the body. It's definitely a homicide. Once the police get here... No, I know it's a homicide. I'm shocked because it's the same. Exactly the same. Oh there, Apollo. Take it in, brother, and explain what you mean. It's the same. The body, the body that is. It's just like how it was in the mock trial. What? It's like the mock trial? I know, it sounds crazy, but... The body's location and position, the murder weapon, the lack of pull pulling blood. <laughs> wow, that's kind of crazy. It's all exactly like the mock trial. You're kidding, right? It can't really all be the same, can it? Oh, somebody took, <laughs> took the mock trial a little too far, I think. It's gotta be real, guys. It doesn't count. <laughs> October 24th, third floor lecture hall. We Apollo and I have our thinking faces on. The whole school's in an uproar. Won't be any more classes today. A murder on campus. That's the last thing expected at a legal academy. I'm gonna tell Professor Means what we observe when we discover the body. The two, you two wait here until you've spoken with the police. Yes, boss. And I'm gonna move towards the middle now. Uh, can you believe this is happening? I can! Yeah, actually, I can too. I, I don't know why I said that. It literally happens all the time to us. I can't believe we have to wait around here. I can't stay st still at a time like these. Hope Judy hasn't faded from the shock of this whole thing. Up. Uh, ah! Uh, Athena! Uh, I mean, uh, Athena! There you are! Judy! I'm, am I glad to see you? I was worried that... Don't worry about me. I'm, I'm student council president, after all. I need to be strong. Student Castle President? Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> and a little surprised. Yeah. Just based on your te temperament before. She's really changed. She used to be kind of sickly and shy. Juniper, was it? You mind if we ask you a few questions? Oh my god, I love you, Polly! <laughs> <laughs> wow, I guess it was love at first sight. Now we're stuck here for waiting for the police. There's not really much to do. Sure, what would you like to know? Why aren't you meek and shy like you were in the beginning? I haven't seen you in ages, Junior. What's it been, seven years or so? Yes, and I remember how you were always there for me, Athena. Um, maybe it's just me, but I wanted to ask you, why you seem so distant? Remember how you used to call me Athena? I liked it better that way. It felt like we were sisters, you know? Yes, but I'm student council president now. And as the student representative of Themis Legal Academy, I have to act properly. There's this stiff and formal before. I knew you wanted to be a judge, but I didn't expect this. It's such a prestigious school. And you're in the judge course to boot. Yes. And Professor Cord had been in charge of it until, until, well, you know. She's fucking dead. Oh, right. Professor Cord was the professor in charge of Judy's course. It's a creepy ass face. What sort of teacher was Professor Cord? sum her up in a single word I'd say she was amazing amazing I just must always seek the truth that was her mantra and she used to used to in trying to fix 
that's what was wrong with our school. She was a beacon of hope in this dark age of the law. Oh. Here we go. We're going to get... I think this is maybe where we're going to start getting some clarification about... What the fuck's up with that? What's wrong with your school? What, what did you mean by that? Oh, uh, nothing. Never mind. No. My magic thinks that I just text something in Judy's voice. In her heart! Professor Court chose my speech... Her script for the mock trial. Oh, you mean all the students in the judge course had to submit a script? And yours is the one she selected? Wow, that's amazing, Judy! Oh, thank you. But now Professor Court is... Who would do such a thing? Just yesterday we were working together, trying to get things ready. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, that's the good stuff. Are you all right, Judy? Maybe you should take it easy for a while. She's still got that cough. And she's not as strong as she pretends to be. Still loves huffing on those fucking sunflowers. I can stop whatever I want, you know. Why do you need a script and a showdown between a lawyer and a prosecutor? Oh, we are simulating a trial, so we need a script as a framework. All the details about the incident and the people involved are included in the script. They also prepared a crime scene, photos, a murder weapon, and other kinds of evidence. Wow, you guys think of everything. Must be hard getting all that ready. Yes, well, it was only Professor Court and I. After all, we didn't want the script or other elements of the mock trial to get leaked. We were the only ones in the entire school who knew all the details. Must have been a big pain in the I mean, that must have been real, really difficult. I wrote the script so that the case would go, would, could go either way. That way, the defense and the prosecution had an equal chance of winning. Uh, hey, if you think that's all she's capable of, you've got another thing coming. Huh? Who said that? It is I, the masked man. Oh, it's I, Tagami! <laughs> oh my god, seriously. Holy god, I am getting some serious Tagami vibes from you. And that other kid reminds me of the, the grade schooler kid from, uh, Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. Well, since I've already gotten, since Tagami, or Edgeworth has already got, like, essentially my Tagami voice, I'm gonna give this guy the, uh, the Yusuke voice. <laughs> yes, I believe that would fit perfectly. It would help beat this rubbish case into submission. Do you genius doesn't stop at her brilliant script? <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! Is that Beyblade? She gave it a war winning performance as a defendant, man! Man! Oh my god, I actually might, I might actually get, give him the Beyblade voice. Um, I think I found a rival to my cords of steel. Uh! Yes, yeah, seriously. You, Robin, are you going to introduce yourself to our guests? Student Council President, I won't have you treating them brutally. <laughs> You're right. I heard Mr. Wright was bringing a couple of guests with him. <laughs> and that would be you two. Apollo Justice and Athena Sykes. Yep, I'm Athena Sykes. And I'm Apollo Justice. Nice to meet you. What's wrong with your jaw? I'll pass on the handshake. I'm studying to be a lawyer. The name's Hugh O'Connor. Hmm. But some call me Mr. Perfect, because I never score less than 100% on tests. Uh. Uh, most pretentious introduction ever! You're too douchey to deserve the Yusuke voice! I would normally give him the Tagami, but I've already I've already used it for Edgeworth and other people, so and I wanna I gotta mix things up, you know? What's with this hand? Is glued to his inside of his pocket or what? Yeesh! Oh, oh my god, I, I feel like- Oh my god, he's so fucking intense! Oh, I think I, I think I gotta I gotta give him Beyblade voice. Let me be first to apologize for you, you totally rude introduction. Sorry! Now, here's my intro. I'm Robin Newman. I'm staying to be a prosecutor, like the really cool kind that nails the bad guys. Oh my god, he has a Beyblade! No, where's the sincerity? Uh, this is kind of a bit of a role reversal, isn't it? The, the prosecutor guy is the one who's using like courts of steel yelling really loud and then the uh, prosecutor is the Edgeworth Tagami kind of snooty intellectual. So he makes pottery too. What's that bracelet like contraption for? Seriously then, he's a fucking, he's fucking Beyblade! This is what he did after the show got cancelled! Judy sure has some unusual friends. I'm not friends with these losers. These two were the lawyer and the prosecutor today's mock trial. And even though I wrote the script, I also put the part of the defendant. I was dead. Oh. 
I liked and toward love triangle centered on campus she devil Juniper Woods. Oh, I see. Love a lawyer, of course, genius and hot blooded prosecutor, of course, student. We'll go head to head in a mock trial battle for the, the she devil's black heart. I see. It was all part of the mock trial. Wait, these two are the guys who supposedly have a thing for Judy? What are we saying they do in reality, too? What is that? You hear that? Is this guy on the left for some reason? So this is like, Mrr. Mrr. like, what is that? Huh, Juniper, come on. Your rules? Your rules what beyond, way beyond just that. That's right. The mock trials is the start. She's also in the school festival's main event. Live on stage, Juniper Woods. And the crowd goes bananas. Woo! You look like you got on his on his headband there. It looks like he has the little phone symbols for, uh, do you want to answer the phone or not answer the phone? <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to sing at the school festival. Uh, All the other girls were too embarrassed to try out, so. Why Judy's singing on stage in front of people? Wow, she really has changed. Oh. I was responsible for making everyone's stage costumes. Oh my god. And this is what I'll be wearing. She's wearing a lab war outfit. Oh, uh, that looks kind of familiar. That reminds me of totally not my mom. Oh my god, look at that. That's amazing, Judy. But then again, you were always good at that kind of thing. This is totally a ripoff. I should sue you. It's costly she's particular or something. Oh, um, thank you. One of my favorite things to do is look up at the stars in the middle of the forest. So you're a fan of the night sky then? Wow, well, Paolo didn't know you were such a romantic. It's not like that. I have this friend. He and I go way back. You've got me really interested in space. Again with this friend? Wait, you had friends when you were young? Color me surprised. <laughs> what? Fuck you! <laughs> I'm a really great guy, all right? I had lots of friends. A student castle president, I cannot allow such mean spirited teasing to continue. Deep. She's angry. I'm gonna bite you! I felt the need to put that in my court record for some reason. The costumes are no problem, but as for the singing, I'm not sure I No! You could do it! That's right, and anyone who says otherwise will have to answer to me. No, no, they, they do seem to have a hot spur. Oh my god. It's like a chivalrous love triangle, a damsel in distress and two knights in shining armor. I can't tell though, was that... Okay, I guess that, I thought that newspaper was, was supposed to be like, setting up the mock trial. But it seems like it, it is reality, so maybe it was just, it was like a tabloid thing. Maybe that famous Herod Oracle wasn't too far from the truth. Uh, okay, yeah. Speaking of the latest news, I wonder how the mock trial turned out. So who won? Nobody. So, how did the mock trial end? We were just about to reach a verdict when the police arrived. Now we'll never know how it would have turned out. Oh, yes we will. Only in real life this time. I guess it's what happens when there's a real murder during a fake trial. Measure right before the verdict. Talk about bad timing. I was this close, man! I bet I would've won! But I bet the defense wasn't doing too badly either, right? Hmm. Well, we'll settle this some other time. And I assure you, I will win that t when that time comes. Like I'm gonna let that happen! I don't think so! Hope they don't end up hurting each other. Oh, don't worry. The three of us have been good friends since we enrolled here. <laughs> we have have proof of our friendship. Proof? Like physical evidence proof? We have tattoos on each of our butt cheeks. Yes, we were studying for a career in law. In the legal world, evidence is everything. Yeah, as long as our friendship lasts, you can bet we'll be carrying them, them around. God, this guy looks constipated at all times. Seriously. Oh my god, dude, just fucking chill. Ah, the fam famous Legal Academy Ingenuity at work. So, what exactly is the proof of friendship, anyway? Well, it's a secret, and if I show you, it will be bad luck. Oh, okay. I knew it. There's definitely some discord in Judy's voice. I can feel it! <laughs> Our friendship is sacred and inviolable. It, it's not something to be put put cheaply on display. Poof! We don't need no stick of poof! Us three friends are, are three of friends forever! 
I can hear the sword in their voices too. But they're talking about their friendship. What's going on here? They're so full of shit. Something's wrong. Something wrong, Athena? No, it's it's nothing. Oh, all right then. <laughs> hey, isn't that? Uh oh. Everyone, stay right where you are. Don't move a muscle. It's got to be me. Hmm. Ta! -da! Best characters here. D Detective Fulbright, is something wrong? Why, if it isn't my little lawyer friends. Oh! oh, sorry, but the small talk will have to wait. I'm looking for a dead person. Juniper Woods, you're under arrest for the murder of Constance Court. Oh, what? What the fuck? Are you serious? She got arrested for murder again? <laughs> so she, was, she had the exact same thing happen apparently before the, even the first case of the game. Damn, she doesn't have very good luck, does she? Uh, what? I'm... I'm what? <laughs> Wait a second, what's going on? Why are you arresting Junie? Police Detective Fulbright. We're involved in this case, too. Aha! So you're the lawyers in the dispatch that we're on first on the scene. I can't tell you everything, but I will say this. There are two major reasons for her arrest. Number one! The suspect led somebody to where the body was. I... I, I didn't... And number two! The crime scene is exactly how the suspect portrayed it in her script. But, but, you can't arrest her on just those grounds. I know, it could easily have been mimicked, right? True, but there's more. However, Prosecutor Blackwell specifically told me to say no more than that. So Blackwell's the prosecuting attorney on this one too? Uh, take Fulbright, we found this in the suspect's pocket. Oh! Hmm? What? Why there's, there's blood on this! Are you serious? We found that in Junie's pocket? That's evidence we made for the mock trial. Oh. A mock trial? Never heard of such a thing. But it sounds fishy to me. Real fishy. Now, if you would off <laughs> Are you serious, man? You would officers. Yes, sir. But... but <coughs> I... <coughs> Junie, I have to do something. I... I can't let them take her away like this. Ah! You can't take my cinnamon butt away! Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Are you gonna say your catchphrase? You're right, I forgot! Injustice, we- Oh! Damn it, you cut me off! Hold it! I refuse to believe that she's the killer! Junie! I've decided. I'm going to defend you. I'll fight with everything I've got! Nina. Uh, Junie. It's good to hear you say that name again. Ah, uh, they love each other. Oh, oh my God! I hate to interrupt your bonding time, but aren't you rather new to all this? You're barely even a lawyer. Well, I don't have much experience, and I may need Apollo and Mr. Wright's help at times. But nobody believes in Judy as much as I do. Ah! I'll help you too, Juniper. There's no way you murdered your professor. Nina! Uh, Apollo! Uh, thank uh, you both! I'm counting on you! <coughs> I've got your back, Juni! It's alright! We, we saw the future! We know you're not gonna- you're not gonna get convicted! <laughs> Guess things worked out after all. Now that you have your lawyers, Miss Woods, it's time for us to head back to the station. da -ha! Injustice, we trust! I can't believe Junie's been arrested for murder. And I can't believe I accepted her case without asking Mr. Wright! Take a deep breath and relax, Athena. I'm here to help with whatever you need. So let's get right on the case. I'm, I'm wondering... Okay, Athena is actually going to be the head of this case? But in the first, the first case of the game, which is supposed to take place before that, she seemed like she had... No idea what she was doing. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what I mean. Wait, wait till I guess we get to that part before I say whether she really even leads it or not. Right. Huh. I won't have this case left in the hands of a rank amateurs. If anyone's going to solve this case, it'll be me. Time to investigate. Oh, that smug little. He hasn't even finished law school. <laughs> you. That was totally rude. <laughs> And you're not the only one on the case, man. I'm in two, big time. Get up, my words. I'm gonna save you. 
It's time to do destinies. Now those two are gone. Let's get back to what I was doing in front about in front of the stage. Talking about in front of the stage. About the mock trial, that is. Oh right. You said the victim's location, position, and so on were just like in the script. Exactly. But without the scripts or any props, it's kinda hard to explain. Uh perhaps I could help. Oh my god! <gasps> Could it fucking be? Could it fucking be? Oh my god, no way! <laughs> Holy shit! Perhaps I can help? Air forehead! Oh, hello! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Pr Prosecutor Gavin! What are you doing here? Hello! Oh, and my fucking killer beats come on! Oh, yes! <laughs> Oh, you hit it. He's such a badass theme. Oh my god, yes, no way. I didn't I didn't I wasn't sure if he was gonna come back or not. Yes! I loved uh Clavier. He was so awesome. I love voicing him too. <laughs> He's like one of my it was like one of my favorite characters to voice. It was so fun. Prosecutor Gavin, what are you doing here? You two seem to know each other? So is someone gonna introduce me? Well, I do believe we have a fresh face here. Greetings, Fraulein. I'm Clavia Gavin. And now in full 3D, so that you may witness my pictorials in all their glory. Some know me as a prosecutor, but I am most famous for my former rock band. We were quite popular, you know. But regrettably, the band went kaput. Oh, really? Oh, probably after that case, right? You heard of us. Perhaps you've heard of us, the Gaviners. I was the lead vocalist. Oh, right. It, yeah, probably after his buddy went to uh, jail. <laughs> Never heard of your band. Then again, I was out of the country until only recently. But, can I get your autograph? <laughs> oh my god, you're smoking hot. I, I know ya. Uh, just met him like three seconds ago and you want his autograph? <laughs> Forgive me, Fraulein, but I've retired from the music piece. But I'd be happy to offer my autograph as a rock star prosecutor, Clavia Gavin. Oh, okay. That one too. That one then. <laughs> She's a lively one, eh, Air Forehead. Didn't know she was your type. Oh, and so happy he's back. I love. I really did like Clavia a lot. He was a really. I thought he was very interesting. A really good, uh, like, quote unquote rival. But someone who's still pushed to, to find the truth either way. This is the newest member of the right ag anything agency. That, that's all. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Athena Sykes. A pleasure to meet you, Athena Sykes. Now that the intros are out of the way, I'm sure you have some questions for me, ya yeah, air forehead. <laughs> uh, seriously, get past the forehead part. My head's not that big. Oh, yes, it is. So, what are you doing here, Prosecutor Gavin? I'm here for the same reason as your boss, to give a lecture and a training seminar. Oh, uh, oh, you were the prosecutor invited here. Ah, uh, I thought it was Edgeworth. Well, I, either way, I'm fucking happy. <laughs> I'm happy with the results. I would've been happy with Edgeworth, but I'm just as happy with Clavier too. So he's the famous prosecutor they invited? And I have another crucial role to play. The Gaviners are getting back together for a one-time special performance. Oh, okay, wait. What, what about the guy I threw in jail? <laughs> we will have him We will have him handcuffed. How's he gonna play his guitar then? He'll just have to do it with his feet. Even though you guys disbanded? Which was a shame, by the way. Really? Maybe they got a different guitarist, though. Yeah, I know how much you adored our music, Air Forehead. Anyway, I studied abroad in Germany to get my, ba my badge early. But I do graduate from here. Wait, so that performance Judy mentioned? I see you've already heard about- Oh, of course, the, the sign! I was actually right! I don't believe it! <laughs> wow! Whoa! Oh my god! Nico's Esper powers are growing! <laughs> wow! It's just kind of scary how often you get this shit on the nose, Nico. You're becoming too powerful. So you already heard about that. One student representative was selected to sing with us on stage. And the stage was supposed to look like this tomorrow. Uh, no wonder she was just look like Lamar then. Oh, that's Clavier on the left, I see. Two big banners and a pair of wicked statues. This is just an illustration, but it's not half bad. Wicked statues? Wait, are these supposed to be you and Mr. Wright? Bingo, Fraulein. And they were so big and magnificent, too. They're terrible weights. 
Uh, actually, yeah. Technically, I was Phoenix Wright's rival before your before I became your rival, Apollo. I was the one who made him lose his badge. <laughs> so you know, I'm kind of a big deal. But the worst part of this whole situation, whole thing is, my long-awaited reunion with my mentor never came to pass. His mentor. Wait, don't tell me your mentor was. Who? Who? Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I was good. I thought I was gonna say Edgeworth, and I was then I was gonna shit my pants. Then Edgeworth was gonna come out, and then they were gonna like start making out. I was like, oh my god, oh, this is insane! What the hell? This is the best day of my life. What's happening? Professor Kor, she was the one who taught me how to think about the law. So if Constance Kor was your professor here at the academy, she may have taught the George course, but she had a huge impact on me. She was fond of saying the end is only justified through proper means. She wouldn't tolerate dishonesty and always revered what was right beyond all else. I can feel Prosecutor Gavin's sadness. Oh no, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Theta, are you tearing up? Don't, don't cry. It's just Gavin. I can't blame you. Prosecutor Gavin knows a lot of what, of who he is to Pros Professor Court. Exactly. So as you can see, we are both joined in, in purpose. So to speak, yeah. Now, let's rock this place hard. Huh? I, I don't follow. Let's rock what? <laughs> Forget already, Air Forehead. I said I'd help you explain the mock trial. We're going to reprise it here in the lecture hall. It might help us catch our her killer. Oh, okay. <laughs> October 24th. Themis Legal Academy, third floor of Lesser Hall. So we, uh... Uh, oh my god, we are! A child reenactment. Uh, all right! So wait, where where am I? At right, the stage is ready. And you, Air Forehead, ready to rock? <laughs> oh my god! Oh man, this brings back the memories, man. Uh, this brings back the fucking lasers. <laughs> um, no, the fence is not ready to rock. You saw the actual mock trial earlier, right? Just relax, you'll do fine. Besides, we have this script right here. Judy's masterpiece! The one everyone's been talking about! Yeah, and there's only one, one in existence. I borrowed it, if you will. Now, for our line, we'll need you to play the part of defendant and judge as both the script. Okay, got it! I've only read the case outline so far. I don't know how it actually turns out, so I'll treat this like I'm prosecuting a real case. You, Air Forehead, will play the part of a fledgling lawyer. A role you were born to play. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm more experienced now. All the evidence is also here with us. We have everything we need to reprise the mock trial. Che Vien, let's get started. Defendant slash judge Athena Sykes is psyched and ready to rock. Court is now in session for our reenactment of the mock trial. <laughs> or what I'd like to call the mock, mock trial. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, a double mockery, perhaps, but a trial is still a trial. Actoon, baby! It's no holds barred. Let's rock! Uh, can't we take it easy today? Objection! It may just be a mock of a mock, but there's only one way to complete. Compete. You play to win! So remember, each time I get you slacking off, I'm holding you get of court! Great. Judge that voices her own objections and abuses her judicial powers. All right, let's do it. Summary of the facts. <laughs> this is kind of clever. I like how this is going. Now then, Prosecutor Gavin, your opening statement, if you please. You got it, Fraulein Judge. Our case is set in a school very much like this one. The victim, a pro professor, female. The defendant, an archery club member, also female. Oh, me, oh, my. I'm innocent. Innocent, I tell you. <laughs> That's some seriously bad acting, Fraulein. <laughs> Anyway, the victim's body was discovered in the middle of the quad. Here's a shot of the crime scene. Ironically, it was Professor Court who posted the corpse. Air Forehead, how did the mock trial participants react to this photo? Mr. Newman was surprised by what Professor Court was wearing. He reacted with, Oh, the green sweatsuit. It's not exactly what I would pick to, to focus on, so why would he care about that? Ah, too much of a fledgling to know what's important, that one. In any case, both in the mock trial and the, and the actual case, Professor Court was wearing a sweatsuit. Moving right along. Hold it! 
Hey, wait a second. The body was discovered in the same area as the mock case, although there was a although there was a stage. Right. Hands were in the air though. Plus the murder weapon and arrow and the lack of blood are also the same. That's right, and therein lies the significance of this mock mock trial. So let's keep rocking it hard just like that. Before the crime occurred, the defendant was to meet with the, vic with the victim in the quad. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. When I arrived at our meeting place, I found the professor with an arrow in her stomach. But it wasn't me. I didn't kill her. Don't have to ham it up like that, Athena. <laughs> it's called getting into character, Air Forehead. Don't be too wet blanket. Right, um, let's see. Oh yeah, then you, you said... A frail co-ed used her bare hands to stab her with a professor with an arrow. I don't think so. At the time of the murder, a male student was seen holding a bow in the archery club room, which is a clear view of the quad. He shot the arrow into the victim before my client even got there. See, I still got it. Nine nine air forehead. That faint swagger does not suit you in the least. Order, order, order! Especially you, Mr. Justice. Me? I was just trying to get into, like, Mr. Your Rocker set. <laughs> you suck at this. <laughs> I'm not. So the victim was shot by the archery club room before the beating even took place. Hence, the defendant could not be the killer. That seems to be the defense's assertion. Prosecutor Gavin, Gavin, do you have any objections? The autopsy report notes that the edges of the victim's wound were unusually ragged. Could such a physical trauma possibly result from an arrow shot from a bow? Nine. I believe the victim was impaled with the arrow by hand, post-mortem. In short, the real murder weapon was not the arrow at all. When Robin was prosecutor, we had a tough time determining the real murder weapon. Well, she's just a student, a warm-up act, but I'm the real deal, the headliner, so to speak. The true murder weapon was most likely the all the that was left in the art room. An all? What's that? I, I mean, er, I mean, hmm. And all you say? What, what, what might that be? It's a kind of tool used for poking holes in paper, wood, and other materials. It's kind of like an ice pick. I have a photo here if you're interested. Bro, <laughs> so blighted up to the handle. Please tell me it's just paint. Most likely, Fraulein. Pretty realistic, ya. Yeah. Let's pretend it's real blood for now. <laughs> the defendant's prints were lifted from the murder weapon. Furthermore, traces of the victim's blood were discovered in the art room. That's why I believe the murder actually took place. So, the question now is how did the body get from the art room to the stage? Hmm. The murder took place in the third floor art room, but the body was found in the quad. It must have been quite a chore moving the body all that way. Not at all. There's a maintenance area and a storehouse right outside the art room. And a cart used to carry balls around was found there. Oh, I think I see I've seen one of those before. That's a pretty big one. A jumbo, yeah. Big enough to fit a person. Or a body. The defendant dropped the body from the art room window, then moved it with the guard. That is how a high school girl could easily move a, move a body all by herself. You, you don't say! Objection! Objection! A body dropped from three stories up, which shows signs of massive blood force trauma. Objection! Oh, hello! Was that Yuri Lowenthal that first voiced me? Seriously, that's not like Yosuke going objection. <laughs> I like how I had absolutely no accent whatsoever. So this voice is probably totally inappropriate, but I love this voice, so fuck you. That may be true, but... You failed to account for the large high jump mat in the storehouse. A body dropped onto such a mat would show no signs of blunt force trauma. Yikes. It's almost scary how similar this whole case is to the, the mock trial proceedings. Quite the crafty killer, an attempt to cast suspicion on the archery club. They moved the body to the quad where it would be an easy shot from the, cl the club room. Then the killer faked the murder weapon by inserting an arrow into the, uh, the owl's stab wound. So it's like she, ha she has only high praise for her Judy's script. So it's like he has only high praise. Were there any further arguments from the defense? Nope, it seemed like the teacher who was playing the judge was satisfied too. Time for the finale, then. Your verdict, if you will please, Fraulein Judge. Huh? Oh, oh, right, that's me. 
Very well. This court finds the defendant, Juniper Woods. Wait a second. If this is just a mock trial of a mock trial. I don't want to declare Junie guilty. Yeah, perhaps that's not such a good idea. Let's end our mock, mock trial here. <laughs> oh, yes, here come my jams on again. Besides, it's about time I get back to my investigation. Thanks, you two. That little run through of the mock trial played up quite a few things. Cool. Well, Black was supposed to be the, the prosecutor for this case, though, right? I don't imagine Clavier is going to be showing up over there. Are you going to, like, help me out, though, or something? Maybe it. Might, maybe it for it. Actum, baby. The, the prosecution's already got a witness sized, sized up, too. That was quick. Prosecutor Black was almost too good. I'm sure in a helpful mood today, Prosecutor Gavin. Well, like I said, I just want to catch whoever killed Professor Corbin. And there's no reason for me to start butting your heads with you two. Anyway, I won't say goodbyes. I'm sure I'll be seeing you later. Bye, Clavier. Ah, I'm so glad he came back. I love Clavier. I always thought prosecutors were all ra a rather scary bunch. But prosecutor Gavin seems pretty nice. Yeah, he's not so bad as the prosecutors go. We should get back to the investigating, too. Don't have nearly we don't have nearly enough information yet. We also have to tell Mr. Rabbit that we accepted Judy's case. Right, looks like we have our work cut out for us. October twenty fourth, Themis Legal Academy, first floor hallway. Uh Mr. Wright. I heard they arrested your friend Juniper. Yeah. Detective Fulbright just took her in. I refuse to believe that one of our students is capable of murder. We must prove her innocent by any means necessary. The end justifies the means. What do you mean, the end justifies the means? I, Professor Means, always say what I mean. And I mean what I say by all means. Mean, 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 mean. Here at our esteemed academy, we train our students to produce meaningful results. You believe in Juniper's innocence, do you not? Of course I do. Judy wouldn't even hurt a fly. Ah! Precisely. We have justice on our side. The only other thing we need are results. It is the height of folly to endanger your client by failing to pursue all means possible. Um, sure, I want to prove her innocence, but I don't like the sound of that end justifies the means part. Well, you are still a young and Id idealistic. It's no wonder you failed to see the wisdom therein. There is but one thing to do now. I must personally take up Juniper's defense. You're going to take her case for us or means? No, I call dibs! I may be a professor, but I am still licensed to practice law. In fact, I have even pra battled Professor Court in... When? Well, in court. No kidding? So you guys were rivals or something? No, nothing of the sort. She was an esteemed colleague at the academy and in court. You see, both pros Professor Court and I graduated from this academy at the top of our class. Wow, I bet they both used to really bring it. Now, if you would excuse me, I'd best go discuss the case with Juniper. Professor Means, please wait. I didn't want to say anything, but DePaul and I already agreed to take her case. It's true. Juniper is counting us to prove her innocence. Really now? You two? And when were you planning on telling me? Sorry, boss. I know we should have asked you first, but... Ah! Relax. Your friend will just hold away in front of your eyes. So then you can just... Sometimes you just have to make snap decisions. I think you made the right one. How wonderful. Very well, Athena Sykes. Let me ask you just one thing. As a lawyer, what is that you treasure beyond all else? Yeah, that's an easy one, Professor. Seeking justice for my clients. What a wonderful answer. Juniper must be overjoyed to have a friend such as you. As a professor, I too shall do whatever I may to help her. And if you decide to take the end justifies the means strategy, come see me at once. Let's hope it never comes to that. Now, if you would excuse me. Well, time's always saying you better start investigating it fast. But first, how about you tell I tell you everything I know so far? Yes, please. Talk to me. Have you learned anything new about the case? Actually, I ran to Prosecutor Gavin, and he told me something interesting. 
Seems the murder took place in the art, art room. There's trace of a large pool of blood there. So the people, the police believe the, the body was moved from there to the stage. What? Really? It's like the mock trial again. Police are searching the art room. But whether they'll find anything, well... Oh, what? Come to think of it. Let's do our own crimes and investigation before it gets too crowded around here. Huh? Are we even allowed to do that? It's no big deal as long as we leave it exactly as we found it. Plus. No, never mind. Now, where was I again? There's really no need to talk about it right here, right now. I want you two to find out for your, find out for yourselves. Okay. So, were you shocked by your conversation with Professor Means? Oh, um, I guess so. Actually, that was pretty shocking. The dark age of the law. I'm sure you've been heard, heard those words before. Sure, a number of times. Prosecutors file charges and lawyers fight back by fabricating evidence. There's a lot of that going around these days. The question is how it related to the case at hand. Training students to reproduce the results. That is the, the school's policy. Well, that in and of itself isn't a bad thing. Right. As long as those results come by fair and honest means. Oh. But what was it that Professor Means said? And just finds the means. It sounds like he's willing to do whatever it takes, even if it means fabricating evidence to get the... To get ju true justice. To survive the Dark Age of Law, you must use any means necessary. Fabrication of evidence and false charges are unavoidable in the quest for results. Uh, well, that's what they're preaching there, here at Themis Legal Academy. But, what'll happen to our legal system if results are all that matter anymore? Ah, relax, it's just a rumor. I'd take it with a grand soul if I were you. Oh, that's a relief. I've been going there for a minute. Yeah, I don't know about that. Ooh, it's making me wonder then. Maybe, maybe this Professor Means guy will end up being the killer or something. The ends justify the means. I'm evil. You can see him having a crazy evil face. Wait a second. What if Mr. Wright examined the victim's body for a reason? But he was worried someone might actually tamper with the evidence. Ah, uh, yes. I see. I think that about wraps up what I know so far. The fact this case closely resembles Mrs. Wood's script is obviously important. Knowing that, you should probably try and identify what's the same and what's different. Okay, I'll try talking to as many people as I can on campus. Okie dokie. Let's go to the maintenance area. October 24th, maintenance area. So this is the maintenance area. Let's see. During the mock mock trial, Prosecutor Gavin said that the art room is right above here on the third floor. And the body was struck from there onto a high jump mat from the storehouse. Right, and then he claimed that the body was transported to the stage in a ball cart. And then... Hmm, someone else here. Hey, it's Robin! <gasps> you scared the crud out of me, man! Yikes! Right back at you! So, what are you doing out here? Ugh, I'm flexing! Working out so that I can become strong enough to save your neighbor! But, I'm so worked up! My training brace is almost breaking out the seams! Oh, right! You got, you like, got arrested, so you're psyching yourself up to rescue her. Yes, because I'm the manliest of manly men. That's why I work out with my manly pace. Except that I hear some discord in that manliness of men's voices of yours. Oh, is that what that sound is? The brace. I don't mean to be rude, but can you talk without shouting? Sorry! I'll try not to shout so much, if at all possible. That, that is. Which is not at all possible by the sound, the sound of it. Um, so you might ask you some questions to Junie's lawyer. No problem. Ask away. Keep them coming, man. Ouch! My ears ache already. Ugh. Roids. Man, Beyblade's gotten fucking intense. Hey, there's a kitty over there. Hi, kitty. Robin, could you tell me a little more about yourself? You want to know about me? I'm a second-rate member of the Fine Arts Club! Fine Arts Club? Looks like broken pottery or plaster. Maybe this is the source of the no that noise we heard. Hmm. There's supposedly two statues on the stage. I seem to recall hearing that a co-ed from the Fine Arts Club had made them. 
Two big bent banners and a pair of wicked statues. It's just an illustration, but it's not half bad. Wicked statues? Wait, are these supposed to be you and Mr. Wright? Bingo for our line, and they were so big and magnificent too. What a terrible waste. Say, did you create those statues by any chance? You bet I did. Both of them. Put my blood, sweat, and tears in those things, man! It's been terrible seeing them all smashed up like that. Nah, I couldn't face Professor Core if I let something like that get me down. What do you mean? Professor Core was the Fine Arts Club advisor. She was all about truth and beauty, man. She always said the good only good result is the truth. That and only lawyers seek the truth through legitimate means for use of worthwhile results. Yes! I'm totally on your guy's side! She must have been an incredible woman! Sheesh, you call me loud when I practice my cords of steel. I know, God, this guy's like Apollo on steroids. Oh man! Why I take the prosecutor course? I mean, how much is to save Juniper if I'm starting to be a prosecutor? Don't worry, I'll clear Judy's name, you'll see. Three of us had a dream. We swore we'd make make it happen together. Prosecutor, lawyer, judge, three of us would hold hold fair and honest trials. Dark age of the law. Ha! We were gonna put a nail on this common man! <laughs> Wow, you guys swear to do that? No! That stupid school rule had to ruin it! School rule? Which one? Anyone with a prior conviction, no matter how minor the offense, they won't. They won't be allowed to graduate from, from the stupid, holier than thou school! I need to shut! <laughs> Tough little academy with even tougher rules. She will never become a judge unless I can prove her innocence. If I fail, the three of us, the three of them will never realize their dream. It's like someone put pressure on my pressure! Pressure on my pressure! Grab the Thamus Th 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 Herald here. Ah, that paper! So, Robin, is this article true? Author of that article has been gunning for the three of us for some reason. It's been nothing but trashy articles like this songs I can remember. Hmm, maybe the author just wants your attention? No way, man! Venom in those articles is way beyond that. Hmm, I wonder. October 24th, third floor lecture hall. Look, there's Hugh! Hey, Hugh! Hello there. I'm busy beating this rubbish courtroom into submission. Oh, it's you two. Do you want something? Did you find anything? You said you were going to do some investigating of your own. Nope, nothing yet. I'm afraid it's not looking very good for Juniper. You don't really think Juniper could have done something like this, do you? Only the author and the victim knew the contents of the script. Both the stage and the art room were in the exact same state as described therein. Nobody could mimic the crime like that unless they'd already read the script. Or wrote it. The butt! It's kind of, again, sort of ironic because the uh, defense, the supposed defense attorney is seems to be pushing towards convicting Juni, Juni and uh, the prosecutor is pushing to defend her. Look, Professor Means is better able to handle this than, than you two, so just leave it to him. There it is again. I'm picking up some discord in Hugh's voice. Can I use my abilities here? Hugh, would you mind telling me a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Whatever. I'm 6'1 and I'm under this uniform. I'm 100% lean muscle. <laughs> oh my. Actually, you, know, you remind me You remind me a lot of the that uh, uh, guy from Angel Beats, the glasses, who was, who was also super diesel under his shirt. My grades are outstanding, and I'm the ace of the archery club. Needless to say, <laughs> I never miss my mark. Oh, and I'm an incredibly humble, too. <laughs> How can you even say that with a straight face? <laughs> Those around me called me a genius, but I pay them no mind. But when it comes to test, I always get 100%, so I suppose it's only natural for them to say I'm a genius. But as I said before, I pay them no mind. I heard you the first time. Fuck, kill me! But what about the mock trial? It's not like you were about to lose to Robin. <laughs> There's a very good reason for that. You see, right, be right before the mock trial started, I saw the body. You, s you saw the body? Right, and I was so distraught that I basically handed Robin a victory. I was sweating. You, would you mind telling us a little more about that? Right before the mock trial, the campus was empty. Everyone was here in the lecture hall. Yeah, your attention, please. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yes, the mock trial begins shortly. All students, please proceed to the lecture hall. That's right. There's that announcement, and then everyone came in here. The only exceptions were the mock trial participants. Juniper, Robin, and I were, were in our personal dressing rooms next door. Wow, you're, wow your own personal dressing rooms? That's total, that's total VIP treatment. Actually, though, for student-teacher meetings, they don't even have windows. Windows. The other two waited patiently in the room, but that's not my style. I'm too cool for that shit. So I headed over to the archery range on the other side of the quad. I did some meditation while I waited. That's the best way to relax. Then just before the mock trial was to start, I headed back toward the main building. As I walked across the quad, I passed in front of the stage. So that's when you saw the body. Right. It was quite quite a shock. As much as I hate to admit it, my legs were shaking. I could have eas easily beaten Robin if it hadn't been for that. Wait, hold it right there. You went through with the mock trial even though you had just discovered a body. Why didn't you tell anyone? I mean, we're talking about someone getting killed here. I think I know why. Was it because of this? Oh, where'd you get that? So this article in the Thief Famous Herald is true. The winner of the mock trial will get the, to make his confession to Junie. Uh -huh. Right, but, but if I reported the body if I'd found, the whole thing would be called off. You really want to win that bad? Bad enough to ignore a dead body? It's too bad. Juniper loves me anyway. In the future, at least. Sorry, but that's not normal. Or could their, their love for Junie really be that strong? Come on, look at her. She's fucking adorable. Thanks for sharing that important piece of information with us. Make her useful tomorrow's trial. Good, because that's all I have to say about the matter. Thanks, and don't worry, we'll prove Juniper's innocence, you'll see. <laughs> I can't wait to- I can't say you two inspire much confidence. Fuck that guy! Okay, Athena, what's next? Okay. I guess we'll go to the outdoor stage now. 24th outdoor stage. I thought the area was cornered off. Hey, the police are discussing something over there. Oh, I know. I'll just quietly sneak over for us. Listen. Here it goes. Ah, Athena, watch for your. Uh. Huh? E ah, bleh. Ouch. Put the stupid box here. Wait. Eek! Apollo's box. There's. What now? Th there's, there's someone force something inside. Let it be a snack. <laughs> oh my God! What is this? S what in the fuck? You morons just blew my cover. Who the fuck is that? What the? There really, someone inside? <laughs> That someone is me, Miriam Scuttlebutt. A uh, girl? Um, oh god damn it. What am I supposed to do? I can't even see your face. And I'm seeing you in the judge course. What's with the box? It's the fate of we who live in the shadows. There's a very good reason why, why none may see my face by the light of day. <laughs> Wait, if you're talk, taking the judge course, then did you write a mock trial script too? Why did you keep hissing? Hiss? Or is it hissing? If you want to see me, see see my script that bad. Well, you better watch out. Read it without my permission, and you'll be wish you hadn't. Who cares? I'm sure it's rejected for a good reason. What in the shit? Fra fragile hands off. Miriam Scuttlebutt. Hey, are, are you are you my court record already? Cause. A senior in the judge court. Yeah, she walks around with a box over her head and has a lot of, has a strange laugh. <laughs> I'm only 25 years old. I thought I was older than that. I made a, I'm a fucking rock star. A few years younger than Simon Blackwell here. 18, 18, 18, 47. Wow, really? This lady was older than this guy was? This is 45. This guy must dye his hair and beard. So you're saying to be a judge, you must be a classmate with Juniper. Are you a friend of hers? Juniper, sure. 
Oh, it's her laugh. That's what that is. Like, like tss, 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 tss. sure, sure, she's my friend. That's why I'm getting gathering info. Now, t tell me all you know. You know for, t you know for tomorrow's trial. Tomorrow's trial. What are you talking about? Tss, tss, tss. I'm going to take the stand naturally. So the witness for the prosecution is some weirdo in a cardboard box. Yeah, this guy's how I get it. My, my, my scoops. Oh, I see. You're the one who wrote that article too. You're right. It's, it's, it's me. So tell me everything you know for Juniper's sake. Wait a second, Miriam. Repeat what you just said. A lawyer with brains as bad as his ears. Poor Juniper. I'm taking the stand tomorrow. Tell me everything you know for Juniper's sake. Clear enough for you this time? Oh. Oh, yes, finally. Here we go. Oh, I heard it. Ah, uh, my agado wrist is tingling. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, good. good. Been a long, long time since I've let loose my sack life powers. powers. I thought so. Kathina, my brace is reacting. Really? That means... Have I already? That was quick. All right, let's do it. Technically, this is me doing it. Okay, now I gotta find... Your eyes, probably? For Juniper's sake, it's gotta be that one, right? Yeah, it was her hands. For Juniper's sake, that's what it was. Gotcha. Gotcha! Gotcha! That's strange. You suddenly tightened your grip when you said, for Juniper's sake. It's like you subconsciously tensed up because you're lying. What are you talking about? What did I ever lie? Punch, punch in there. Oh, man, punch the crap in that box. Okay, then let me ask you this. Why were you selected as a witness? That's an easy one. I'm the editor-in-chief of the famous Herald. I know everything there is to know around campus, even the darkest of secrets. Editor-in-chief, huh? Pretty impressive. S yeah, well, it's a lonely one-woman operation. I do it all by my, all myself, from reporting to editing to publishing. Still impressed. I'm a perfect storm of journalism because I bring it all to the table. S -s -s -s. And this is the evidence here. Next edition of the, the famous Herald, published to co coincide with the mock trial. Extradition that covers the mock trial. Oh, okay. Thanks, Miriam. You've revealed who you truly are. A really weird human being. Ah, uh, is that one guy's hands glowing down there? <laughs> Seriously, look at his hands. Oh, I've got energy flowing into my fist. An unceremonious cancellation. A someone who's never had Junie's best interest in mind. What? Are you questioning our friendship? Yeah, I fucking knew it. Look, you may want answers, but no can do, because what you're saying conflicts with this piece of evidence. Yes, I fucking knew it. Boom! That's the famous Herald, the paper I published. What about it? Are you really that dense? This article is full of malicious lies about Junie. It's definitely not selling a true friend of hers, which would write. <laughs> you got it all wrong. Another staff member wrote that one. You got it all wrong. Yes. What do they say? How do they say that in Japanese again? So the Tangaropa guy always says, "No, you got it all wrong," or that's, or, or that's all wrong, or something. I don't think so, Miriam. You, you even said it yourself just a moment ago. It's a one-woman operation. Or did you forget already? And hey, just give me the info you have. Stupid pawn. Juniper's just, just using you. Ah, uh, broke you. Ah, uh, big bulgy eyes. Go back inside me. Juniper would never be friends with some weirdo in a box. Now, I want the truth, Miriam. Go out in your box in order to collect gossip for your sleazy paper, isn't that right? You're not really friends with Juniper, are you? This is no duh. She's the target of my scoops. My readers demand dirt. Extra, extra, the dirty little secret of the squeaky clean student council president. Dirty little secret. All right, what are you planning to say in court, huh? I'm a witness in her, to her part in the crime. I'm going to tell an old a shocking expose. The end justifies the means. That's my brand of tell-all journalism. The end justifies the means? Wait a second! This shit again? In this dark age of law, many of us embrace Professor Means methods, even future judges. I've even adapted an end justifies the means brand of journalism, which includes... Tape recorders secretly hidden all over our campus. It cannot be possibly legal. <laughs> secretly recording every last word without anyone being any the wiser. But didn't she realize she's that's totally illegal? One of them was at the scene of the scene of the crime, the art room. 
You put a tape recorder in the in the art room? Put it to record. Hey, could that could that possibly admiss be admissible in court though? Sis, you wanna know? You really wanna know? Yes, please. That's so nice of you to I'd like I'd like I'd really tell you now. Fix comes out in court tomorrow. You're so mean, Miriam. According to my evidence, a fatal fissure had opened between the three of them. Who, Junie, Hugh, and Robin? What do you mean by fatal fissure? A rift in the trio. I just realized she has a panda on her box. Is it holding a beer? Panda getting fucked up. Juniper, Hugh, and Robin used to be the best friends. Used to be. They still seem to get along fine to me. It says some discord, though. Just, 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 you don't know anything. Professor Means has, has his followers, and Professor Court had hers. Their influence is inescapable. Are you implying that one of them adheres to that extreme idea you and Professor Means have? Why would anyone follow that philosophy? <laughs> How could you possibly understand? You're new around here. Maryam, wouldn't you feel better if you could came out of the dark and into the light? <laughs> I can see fine in here. You'll be seeing the one seeing the light in court tomorrow. They don't realize how guilty Juniper Woods is, really. Ugh. Uh, oh, we're gonna have to cross the examiner tomorrow. But I don't know where, where to start. Well, let's at least take care of whatever we can today. You're right. Let's see what else we can find out. Well, I think we talked to everyone. <laughs> let's see what else we can find out. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> everyone is linked to the, to the case. Okay, maybe it's about time we wrapped up our investigation. Oh, wait. We haven't met with Junie yet. Yeah, you're right. Set back over to the detention center. Da -da 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 center. October 24th, center center, visitor's room. <laughs> oh, there's it. The, now she's back to her goofy face. <laughs> Thena, thank you so much for coming. She called me Thena, like she used to. Maybe she's finally letting her, her guard down. Man, you just have the worst luck. <laughs> Goofy face are just like, eh. Judy, the crime's unfolding exactly like your script. Any idea what's going on here? We wanted to make it fair, so the script was kept secret until the day of the mock trial. And the only people who knew the details were Professor Cord and I. Hmm. Nothing we haven't heard already so far. However. Yes? What is it, Judy? Well, there was this one article in the school, pa school paper. I mean, this one? It's more like a tabloid piece than an art news art piece newspaper article, if you ask me. I've I've been worried that the trial would would wreck the friendship between Rob and Hugh and me. She wants to stay friends, but both of the guy, but both of the guys are hoping to take it to the next level. Oh, the passion of high school drama! Wish I could, I wish I could have experienced it. <laughs> God dang it! Shy guys potting for me, and I know I shouldn't have, but I revised the script to favor the the prosecution. Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Ah, uh, so if Robin had won, you he, he wouldn't have been able to confess her love to Junie. <laughs> wow, wow, this is a weird school. <laughs> this is like really something that they legitimately played out. Yeah, so go, good, you've won. Now go confess your love to her. Junie, I fucking love you, bro. I don't feel the same way. No! <laughs> I would have kept the, the trio's relationship the same. Never knew Junie could be so devious. <laughs> Sorry, I guess my personal problems probably won't be of any help in court, huh? You never know. Help often comes from most unexpected places. Thanks, Juniper. But wait, did, I thought Robin would then get to confess his love. It was Is it just Hugh that could have confessed his love? I thought if, if Robin won, he would have done too. Or does he not love her? I, th I thought he, he did seem to. <laughs> I was wondering about that all you had on, on you when you were arrested. Could it possibly have been switched out with like the the fake one? Detective Fulbright, we found this this. We found this suspect's pocket. Hmm. Why there? What? Why there's there's blood on this? I guess when they take it to the they'll find out if they take it to the lab. That's evidence made for the mock trial. A mock trial? Never heard of such a thing, but it sounds fishy to me. Real fishy. I guess kind of an idiot. It was the murder weapon for the mock trial. Professor Court and I were prepping it in the art room until the day before the trial. I didn't even realize I still had it, had it on me until I was arrested. Then we got nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be any way to think, link it to the crime. Still, that blood red color on the, the all bothers me. Wasn't it just paint or something? 
I mean, I was looking at it pretty far from pretty far away, but it probably was just paint. But that's what bothers me. It wasn't on the all when we were pre prepping it yesterday. It wasn't. Then how and when did it get there? Well, before the mock trial began, I showed Thena and Mr. Wright to to the waiting room. Then I went back to my dressing room to get the trial props we were going to use. That's when I found the art room key and the all with what looked like blood on it. A key and the all. Dresser Court normally has the art room key since she's the, the fine arts club advisor. And since that key was there in the dressing room, I thought she was the one who had painted the all to look like it had blood on it. Ah, oh, crap. For all, she always insisted that the props should be realistic, so... The all suddenly shows up on the day of the trial with what looks like blood on it. I have a really bad feeling about this. Yeah, so that probably was the actual murder weapon. Me too. Let's not jump the gun on this. You and Professor Kor were, were busy preparing for the mock trial together yesterday, right? Was that the last time you saw her? Yes. I left school at around 6 o'clock p.m. Did you notice anything different about her? No, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. She looked and acted the same as always. I would have never guessed she'd end up like this. It looks like we're about to out of time. Thank you for coming to see me. <laughs> I'm sad. We'll do everything we can to prove you innocent tomorrow. I know, and I believe in you, Athena. Well, I should go now. Bye. Ah. Uh, she gonna be all right? It's like a sh like a shadow of the girl we met back at the academy. The Judy I knew was always like that. A little weak and sickly. But the fact that she's lifted her facade shows that she trusts us. Even still. What is it? Well, when Junie and her two friends were talking about their friend friendship, I sensed some discord in their hearts. Seriously? Yeah, but it was really faint. I might have been mistaken. There's no reason to doubt their friendship. Is there? Or is there? One of them will betray the other. Don't worry, everything will be fine. You and Juniper's are, Juniper are friends, right? You know that f that friend I mentioned to you earlier? Well, get this. Whenever something's, so something's troubling one of us, the other can just feel it. That's real friendship. I suppose you're right. Might as well forget about that and cost around the trial. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, seriously. Yup, tomorrow's the big day. Let's sort out what we know so far. Okay. Or for over wherever we find out. The victim, Professor Costin Cor, was murdered in the art room in the third floor, and her body was moved to the outdoor stage in the quad. Also, the location where we found the body was just as as the make the mock trial scripted. Or just described that. I wish I wish those were the only similarities they shared. What do you mean? What I mean is the script and this case are exactly the same in almost every respect. So it follows that the actual trial may very well unfold, just like the mock trial did. Oh well, no. Trial ended up right, ready right before the prosecution was about to win. Well, that's not gonna happen. This time, Judy will be declared guilty, not guilty. Of course, I intend to get out our results the honest way. We can do this. We'll be fine. After all, I have Apollo, and he's the king of being fine. Yes, I am fine all the time. To be continued. Okay, I don't know if that's gonna be one or two episodes or not. <laughs> Isn't that kind of a weird place? Uh, right now, it's almost two hours for me, but there's quite a bit I need to cut out, so. Because occasionally, you gotta get up to take a pee break. But it's off to a good start so far. I like that Clavier came back, and uh, I don't know. I, I, off the bat, I feel like possibly the, the Professor Means might have, have something to do with this. I mean, it did seem to have a very strong difference of opinion from Professor Court, right? But I like this. I like the sort of setup, the fact that we're like in this academy that trains lawyers. And now we're finally getting an explanation too of the whole dark age of law thing. Hmm, interesting. Intrigue. I'm curious to see uh, how this goes. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already to become a Piggy Penguin. I'm more the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.